Good afternoon and welcome to Mimico's Community News Channel. I'm Terry Hayes and this is Katie Kaboulis. In today's top story, a four alarm fire gutted the Wei Fung Fruit Company on September 27th. In continuing our social service series, we've interviewed some of the most active members of the community. Dennis Woodcock sat down with Arthur Lockhart to discuss the gatehouse and the transformative healing garden scheduled to open in the spring of 2014. Nicole Banks had a chat with Dwayne Abbott about the vital work LAMP is doing for the community and he shared his views on the strengths of Mimico and his vision for the kids he works with. Liz Wilson spoke with Laura Latham about the Franklin Horner Community Centre. And we'll be right back after this short break. Well now you got to have some money Welcome back, and now over to today's top story. Over to you, Terry. Thanks, Katie. In our top story, a local success story burned down to the ground. The Wei Fung Fruit Company has been an active business for over 10 years at Birmingham and 8th. On the evening of September 27th, for reasons unknown at this time, a fire broke out and gutted this local hub. I interviewed the fire crew, who worked through the night to put out the fire and prevented it from spreading. Here is the report from the 8th Street Firehouse. Hi, I'm Terry and I'm here with one of the most important community people here. This is a fireman, Cam. Um, I'm at the 8th Street Firehouse and I'm going to ask him a couple questions. Can you please tell us what the most important community assets are here in Nimico? Okay, what about community assets specifically? What do you mean as far as uh, helpers in the community or do you mean more um, the demographics of the area? The helpers. Oh, the helpers in the Well, we, we work frequently with police and paramedics, and I mean, they're obviously being they help. Uh, also, the, the Daily Bread food, uh, bread food Bank is in this area as well. And can you tell us a little bit, there was the fire recently at 8th yes. Birmingham, yes. the fruit market. Can you tell us how long it would take you to put out a fire like that? Well, I think it varies, uh, obviously based on the specifics of the fire. In that particular case, we were called in uh, around 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we were there uh, after 7 o'clock. Wow. So we were there for the duration and uh, also I, there were crews uh, after shift change uh, in the morning they came on and they were there for part of the day as well. Wow, so that's a huge effort on your part yeah. to put it out. And my last question is, um, what can the community members of Mimico do to make Mimico a safer community? Well, I think, I mean, there's a lot of sort of common sense things it seems that people can do uh, I think, you know, obviously, you know, driving more safely through school zones, not walking with uh, cell phones or just, you know, it seems like so many uh, people are distracted drivers and things like that. Um, I mean, we run calls on the highway, there's uh, accidents that we see on the highway, and there's fires. Obviously, um, just being uh, safer in, in the kitchen for, to prevent kitchen fires and things like that. Awesome. Thank you very much for being okay. here. And here's Erica on the scene. Over to you, Erica. We're here live on the scene at the Birmingham Islington Fruit Market Fire. You can see the damage done. Earlier today, Terry, our reporter Terry, was down at the fire station on 8th Street talking to the crew who dealt with this fire. It was said to take six hours to put this fire out. Six hours. Unfortunately, they were unable to disclose the cause of the fire and it will be investigated by the fire marshal to identify the cause of the fire. And we can, we can walk down and see how far this fire actually has gone. The Weifung Fruit Company. The damage started in the front. There was a truck earlier that, that the flames were shooting out of this truck. And you can see the windows have been blasted. Quite a fire. There was debris all the way down to Lakeshore, and it comes all the way down across. As we learn through the fire 
marshals report what actually happened and what the cause of the fire was, we will be keeping our viewers posted. Live from the scene, back to the studio. Wow, thanks Erica. That was really devastating, that yeah. fire. Thankfully nobody got hurt. But look at those firefighters. I know they sure put out my fire. Now here's an interview with Dennis. Hi, this is Dennis Woodcock. I'm interviewing Arthur Lockhart, who is the executive director of the Gatehouse and a Humber College professor. Thank you. Nice for, to meet you. Yeah, nice hey. to meet you. Thanks for the interview. Okay, glad to do it. So we just have a few brief questions for you. Uh, we'd like to start with, what gaps do you see in the community and what does your organization do to help alleviate the gaps? When we look at the community, uh, it's not so much looking at gaps but more at the capacities that exist there. So what we want to do is figure out how do you bring the wisdom resource of people together to work on any particular issue. Somebody might say there's a gap in support services for children who have been abused, as an example. Mm -hmm. So what I, I would do with that, I always kind of turn it up on its head in terms of taking a negative and turning it into a positive. And so we call it social alchemy, actually, is what it is. And so the gaps might be the, re the physical place for a child to come and disclose that they've been abused as a sexually, or a teenager or an adult. So how do you go about bringing resources together on that particular gap? So that would be one thing. Resources for children who have been abused. Resources for adults who finally come forward maybe three decades later to say they've been abused. What service is there for them? There really isn't anything in the, in the entire country of Canada for that particular gap of adult males who have been abused as children. For they support. Come exactly, yeah. Okay, and uh, that leads into the next question is, what assets do you see in the community in terms of people and resources and the skill set that the residents have? I see, quite honestly, without sounding like hyperbole, I see assets every time I take a step. Yeah. Every time I walk by a student, I see that as a person as an asset in the most beautiful way that you can think of that person as their resource right there. There's a living, breathing human being that has the capacity to help other human beings. So in my mind, when I walk down the street, it's just passing one resource after another because everybody has all these skill sets. So then you also invite people together to explore what other resources could they bring to any particular issue. So for example, when we're building a house here, we had a newspaper reporter who came out to do a story and he was actually, his real ambition was to be a house painter. So he painted the whole house. So Perfect. we have more than one resource in all of us and so how do you draw that to bear? That's what we do. And Mimico is a very rich community with oh, a diverse population. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And so here in this community of Mimico, I think one of its greatest gifts is the capacity for social transformation. Yeah. Where you come together, work on a project where people say, that's impossible, that place deserves only to be torn down, it has no purpose, it has no use. And people from Mimico seem to have a view of, wait a minute, what's inside that place? What magic lives in all of that crumbled down building or that we might see the person on the street who is homeless and people say that's a t terrible person. Actually, it's the other way around. Right? So that's what people in Mimico are good at. Like the Humber College itself, for yeah. example. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. turned a falling down hospital. Into, into the place school. that is, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, our next question would be, who are your main allies within the community and what support does your organization get through funding and volunteers? And yeah. The main allies are the student base from Humber College. Students from Humber College have, are the reason why the house is going the way it is. We have over 40 volunteers, many of them are Humber College students, people who live in the Mimico area, and so that is, in my estimation, the main ally. That when I look at it, when I walk into a classroom, I often say it's like, this is where the magic takes off now. Mm -hmm. The minute the door closes, we're going on a magic carpet ride. And that's filled with the resources in that classroom where all the students right then and there. That's our, that is, in my estimation, our main resource. 
And what sort of funding do you get for the gatehouse? A couple of things, <coughs> pardon me, on the funding is we never received core funding from a government agency. The reason for that, where people said that's crazy not to go after core funding from a government agency, I said don't do it. I don't want to have core funding. I want the funding to be the human spirit of everybody that gets connected to the house. So what does that mean? It means that we look at for local grants, we create projects that people want to pay money for to have the resource happen for them. So that way we're not stuck in uh, a government organization that says that the next fiscal year we're cutting the gatehouse program. We're here because the resources of everybody that contributes, it's called in-kind service. The house, when I started the house, uh, I created a lease of the City of Toronto for $300,000. I was short $299,000.99. So how do you do <laughs> get $300,000? And you can imagine you go home that night and your partner says, how was your day at school? Oh, pretty good. And I signed a lease for $300,000. How do you I'm make that shy. count to life, right? And we're <laughs> shy exactly that amount. Um, so what do you do? It's a community capacity building model that we do. And so we go into it in that way. And there's many nuances to do that model, um, which is great in your course on community development. I hope you get into all that kind of work around community capacity building and how that really works beyond the traditional framework of government funding. And I'm telling you, the world is awash with resources if we really look at it. This place has been here for 16 years many different organizations have come and gone yeah. and the little gatehouse keeps like that little train that could yeah. <laughs> it just keeps on going right? can. yeah so uh, yeah that helps okay and uh, just finally would you like to discuss a little bit for a few minutes in our as we wrap up the, yeah. about the work you do in the gatehouse particularly or the yeah. community gardens as yeah, well that both. you're working on like, and if any of the students in the in your community uh, engagement community development program want to be part of this uh, there's some of you sitting that are working on this project right now that were out in a meeting the other night yeah. on the transformative healing garden. It's going to be the first transformative healing garden in Canada that's reaching out right now to celebrate and support people like yourself, students like you guys, who reach out on a social justice initiative, whether it's violence, poverty, abuse, you name it. Mm -hmm. We want to have a symbolic setting where people from all over the place can come and get inspired and sit and talk and converse about it. So we're making this healing garden out here in the, in, uh, beside the gatehouse. And we've already connected with 26 countries from around the world that want to be part of this healing garden. So I, and I, when I saw a number of you at the meeting the other night, I was like, oh, this is great. Humber students, what you can't go wrong. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Um, Just before we get yeah. past that, could you say what the 26 countries what sort of involvement? Yeah, they're, they're places, first of all, they're places from Germany, United Kingdom, Liberia, uh, Ghana, Guyana is an example of some of the places. And what they're doing, what I've asked of them, if they would send us an artifact that symbolizes the work that they're doing in those particular places. And so we're going to build that artifact that they send us about their work and we're going to build it right into the garden. So. As a ex very specific example of how this is working, there's a woman, her name is Ronke. She's in uh, Nigeria, and we Skype with each other on a regular basis. She's trying to get a gatehouse type place going for women and children in the particular area where she lives. And, and she's doing it even under threats of death on occasion, that you're not supposed to do this kind of work. So she goes to the people out there in Nigeria, all the way across the world, and says and shows the letterhead from the gatehouse and says these people in Canada are supporting my initiative and people say oh my gosh she's known all the way over in Canada yeah. so she can be really strong and we're just trying to support another human being yeah. uh, in their work so that's a really exciting thing right your There's, support gives her credence in her own absolutely community. right and uh, and then so that's the part of the garden it's it's a working garden it's a place that people hear about other initiatives they come, they sit around, they chat, and work together. That's one of the things we do at the Healing Garden. That's a great idea. And what about the community garden is the other uh, aspect of it? The community garden is going to be a huge vegetable garden, probably the biggest garden in Toronto, for communities to come together, grow crops, 
and the crops are there to share with the food bank and other organizations where people are having a bit of a tough time in terms of food. And we're going to be, this garden out here is going to look like you're up in the farm country, I hope, by the time it's all done. Um, it's the entire orchard that we're looking at ultimately developing into a rich garden. And so you bring everybody together, they celebrate, they share, they take care of each other, all of those kinds of things. So that's pretty cool. Like the Memico is one of the few garden places in Toronto that doesn't have a community garden. But when we have the community garden, it'll be the garden that's the biggest community garden in the city of Toronto. It's, it's sort of historically going back to the roots of the site. Absolutely right. This was an agrarian process where people got back in touch with the earth yeah. when they were having very difficult times emotionally, mentally, and so on. And even the other night in the meeting, I don't know if some of you recall, but one of the women that was in the meeting said she used to work here at the hospital grounds yeah, way back recall. when. And doing, she thought we could have workshops around working with earth and all that. Yeah, and I just thought, style. wow, that's, how do you beat that? I mean, yeah, that's perfect. phenomenal. So, yeah, it's therapeutic as well. Indeed it is, indeed it is, yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Great, Arthur. nice we'll to meet up with you today. Yeah, all the best to your program. That was a great interview with Arthur Lockhart at the Gatehouse community. He's definitely one of the major important people in this community, and he speaks about volunteer in being very important, so that's a great thing in this community. And next up, we have Nicole Banks' interview with Lance well-known Dwayne Freshy Abbott. Over to you. Um, hi, I'm Nicole, and I'm here interviewing Dwayne, who's a youth leader at LAMP Community Health Center. Tell us a bit about your role at LAMP. Um, well, um, I run the programs here at Street Level Youth Center, uh, within, that's within inside LAMP Community Health Center. Um, I do, we do social and recreational programming, so um, for kids between 10 up to 19. And um, yeah, it's social and recreational programming. Yeah. Cool. And so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, first, I'm going to ask you about the community of Mimico. So what do you see as an asset in Mimico? A lot of diversity. That's one thing I would say, there's a lot of diversity over there. Um, a lot of people have different walks of life. Um, some people are, um, have issues, with, some issues with, uh, with drugs, some issues with uh, mental health. That's what I find a lot, that's a lot, um, a lot of going on over there. And uh, other assets over there is um, just like the, the community, the tight-knit community they have over there. You know what I mean? That's what's a real asset over there for sure. And um, other assets is the, um, the different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The new, they, they, they kind of started a new uh, thing over there, like building up new buildings and the, the new park over there. So, oh, the so the reno like the re renovation? Yeah, of it. that's what I'm looking for. They do like the re renovating the, that whole little Mimico area right there. So, that's I think it's really good for the area and good for the, the people in the area to, to know that the city's trying to help them out and, and put um, help them up with a um, better living, living lifestyle, right? So, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, so, what do you see as like the gaps in the community? Like, what are the things that need patching over? Gaps in the community. I would say um, getting access to stuff over there. Like, LAMP tries their best to go over there, and it doesn't seem that it's not really that far. Mm -hmm. But I know people have an issue of getting over here. You know what I mean? Um, T -T TTC um, vehicles, whatever it is, right? I know they have trouble accessing certain stuff, even though LAMP's like literally. 10 minute drive, but some people can't afford bus tickets, you know what I mean? And some, sometimes you want something that's a walking distance. For sure. And to walk from here to, to Mimico, let's be real, it's a good like 15, 20 minute walk. And everybody wouldn't, wouldn't to do that, right? So I think ac accessibility is, one, is a big gap over there. Um, another gap I see is um, with um, youth programming over there. Um, we, we try to get kids from Mimico area to come over here, but once again, traveling. Mm -hmm. you know, who wants a kid traveling? We finish at 5 o'clock. Nobody really wants to keep traveling at 5 o'clock, especially in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. 5 o'clock is dark already, right? Yeah. So, um, especially alone at like right. 10 years old, which is your minimum age, right? Yeah, exactly, right? So um, I think um, finding more youth services for them over there would help them up over there a lot. Yeah, for sure. So um, talking more about LAMP now, um, who or your specific program in LAMP, who would you consider like your allies in the community? Out of the community, um, I would say the schools, mm -hmm. the schools for sure, the local schools, Second Street School, Seventh Street School, um, Lakeshore Collegiate, um, Redmond. Um, we, we try to really connect with the schools. Like I go, I'm on the Redmond Parent Council um, 
Trent Council. So I go to their meetings once a month. Um, I'm also on, I used to be on a parent council for Second Street School. So that's why mm -hmm. I still connect and how we how we can connect to each other, help the kids in all at once, right? Um, other stake other other people that we talk to in the community is um, women's habitat. Yeah, for sure. They're right there too around the corner, so we try to connect with them, we try to connect with job start. Like sometimes I'll connect with job start and ask them to come in and talk to youth about um, how to do resumes, how to do how to conduct themselves in an interview. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So um, there's them. We connect with um, some of the actually we connect with some of the, like even just like uh, the restaurants and stuff like the, the, the storefronts along Lakeshore, like as in we get them to, to put our posters up in their, in their windows, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that's an ally right there to me, even if it wasn't just to put a poster in, the, sure. in, the, in the window, that's a, definitely an ally for us, so yeah. And um, how do you fund your programs? Uh, so 60% of our funding is from United Way. Right. And other than that, we have to do grants um, and stuff like that, right? So like Trillium um, gave us money for the next three years to do um, arts and culture. Okay, so did that fall like um, under your street festivals that you do yeah, for exactly. fundraising or the, the car washes? Yeah, exactly. The street banner we do. We do a thing called That's street, a big event, right? We do a big event called Street Banner every year. It's, a, it's a, the week before, no, the week, actually the same week as Caravana. It's kind of our little Caravana thing down here. We have West Indian food, really, really good, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a, a bounty castle sometimes for the kids. We do different games with the kids, um, like performances, like steel pan performances. So yeah, that, that money comes out of that. And recently, uh, for the tweens, for the young kids who are 10 to 13, on Fridays we do arts and culture every Friday. So like um, we do, uh, that's what we did a, a flag, a flag, um, what do you call it, a scavenger hunt. Oh cool. And once they found the flag, it was black and white, they had to find the colors for the flag and find one particular um, thing about that country, like a dish or yeah. something significant about that country. So, you know what I mean? It was fun. They were into it. Yeah. Just sure. finding something and then finding information. And so we all learned something new, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's part of where our money's going towards. Great. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to know if there was anything else that you thought was important that you wanted to add to the interview. Um, the only thing I, I would, I'll say to add, um, one thing with uh, our program here and even lab in general, a lot of opportunities. You know what I mean, I, I am also the volunteer coordinator for street level specifically, so I try to draw kids in to do their 40 hours, stuff like that, right? So they have opportunity to do their 40 hours. And then once they get here, they can be part of our programs. It's an opportunity to be part of our, just being part of our programs. And then um, there's opportunities to even um, work here later on. It could be a peer, we, we do peer, um, peer positions here. So the age is like from like 1924, and they get a job to work with here like part time, whether it would be sports or with recreation or with um, arts and culture, or whatever it is. So it's an opportunity for them to to grow. You know what I mean? From a participant, volunteer to working here, and I'm a prime example of that. I used to be in the programs here, as you know. I used to be in the basketball programs, swearing up and down the storm. <laughs> but then eventually, talked to Denise. She found out what I used to work with. Who I used to work with kids. I was young, younger kids, and then I found my niche, and I've been here for the last like. 10 years. It's actually kind of freaky. But yeah, I've been here for like the last 10 years. So I went from being in the program, volunteering with Denise, and then now I'm here working full time. You know what I mean? So for me, that's like an example for the kids. You know what I mean? So yeah, a lot of opportunities here. Definitely. Well, thank you for meeting with us. No problem. I appreciate the interview. All right. And everyone should go to LAMP. Wow, what great words from a Lakeshore veteran such as Dwayne. Now off for a quick break, and when we get back, we'll be talking with Liz Wilson to Laura Latham. Welcome back, and now it's over to Liz. Thanks for watching today's show. We're going to wrap up this series by playing you some clips that show Mimico's community spirit. Hello, uh, my name's Art. Hi, I'm Denise Masters. Hi, I'm Jessica Medeiros. Hello, my name is Linda Hill. Hi, my name is Michelle Coleman. My name's Amanda. Hi there. Welcome to the fire station. Hi, I'm Nick, and this, my favorite place in Mumico is 8th Line Skate Park. <laughs> Hi, I'm Caitlin, and what I like about Mimico is the waterfront. I love um, the lake shore. I love that we're close to the lake. I love the lake and I love the parkland in Mimico. It's a really nice area, very scenic and pretty. I love Mimico and two of my favorite spots are Rotary Park and going for a walk down by the water close to Rotary Park. I, mean, I moved here in 1989 and I saw the gem of the city being so close to downtown and highways and the lake. 
I've been here for about 11 years and my favorite thing about Mimico is the sense of community. Everybody takes care of each other and everybody's interested in what everyone's doing and we all work together. What I like about uh, Mimico is uh, it's a great community. Uh, I like the people there and uh, we have a lot of connections to the community as well. So uh, yeah, Mimico is fantastic. I have a lot of old connections to the community and that's why I love Mimico. People around here are fantastic, it's a real community feel. And what I like about Mimico is Lakeshore Campus. It's a really friendly community and everyone here is really warm and welcoming. I saw this fire station back in 89, I said one day I'd love to work there. You know, I love this community, I love the area and I'd love to be a part of this community. And I love that it's very family friendly around here. They all know each other and they're all integrating with each other and there's no, no real segregation between any of them, you know what I mean? So, yeah, real neighborly. Ready? Tell me when. How did you start? Not I being said, nervous. I hit record. Dennis Woodcock sat down with author Lockhart to, uh, can't do this. Oh. Oh. Uh. Uh. No. Uh. Uh, I can't do that. Uh, Arthur is definitely one of a uh, very uh, forget it. Wow, what great words from a look. Now off for a quick break, and we. <laughs> wow, what? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Wow, what great. <laughs> And we're going to end this series with playing some uh, clips from the community members. Uh, f it. <laughs>